you have a prepaid call from an inmate at the California State Prison. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using... Alright, uh, my name is Kalina Touch. Uh, everybody calls me Kay. Um, raised up in Long Beach, 33 years old. I'm looking for uh, somebody to write, some people to correspond with. Love meeting new people, very outgoing, very outspoken, uh, and very open minded. Uh, I'm looking for also some support letters, you know, thinking about filing for computation and or going to board soon. So if you're interested, Contact me um, at Kalina Touch G54423, uh, Lancaster State Prison, A Yard. Um, yeah. So, what do you go by? Uh, I go by K, just my first initial. What's your nationality? I'm Cambodian American. Were you ever part of any gangs, groups, or organizations? So, formerly a gang member, um, as far as groups and organization, I am part of the greater community of prisoners. Um, Del Arte School of Theater, College of the Redwoods, uh, Community College, uh, Cal State LA, just got accepted there, so that type of things. Uh, Class for Life, uh, uh, K-9 Rescue Program here. I represent those now, I don't represent any gangs no more. Okay, can you clarify exactly what gang uh, you were from at one point? Uh, from Asian Boys, uh, ABC, um, in Long Beach, California. Okay, can you um, elaborate on your upbringing as a child and what led you to joining Long Beach Asian Boys? Uh, so, growing up, I was always curious and adventurous, um, very outgoing. I think kind of like what led me to gangs, probably feeling misunderstood, not really connecting in the home, you know, being raised by... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Being raised by immigrant parents in America, you know, so trying to kind of like grow up traditionally climb and also, you know, like traditional American, right? Like, it was a, a lot of conflict there. So I, I, there was nobody I could really relate to. Parents were kind of stoic, didn't really have much information for me. Uh, all they told me was, like, go to school, right? So because that, there was that dynamic at the home, the household, uh, I kind of was just, like, in the street. Um, it was a loving home. I had both parents. I wasn't, you know like making no excuses, but in the streets is where I found other people that didn't fit in a school, that didn't fit in a home, that were always, you know, the disgrace of the family. I was called all these names and soon I, you know, started to kind of identify this and then believe in those names. Um, and once I found my emotional relief, which is anger and violence, and then in the gang culture where it's kind of praised and glorified, I realized, okay, this is what I can, you know, I can thrive in, right? Like, something I can flourish in, along with kind of just connecting on an emotional level with these out, these other social outcasts. Um, everybody in my family was either TRG related, uh, which is like the rival gang of Asian boys, or from TRG. It just so happened, my friend. My group of friends and where I lived at at the same time were from Asian boys and we were all Crips. So it was no question. That's what I was going to be. And once I committed, a very loyal person, very, you know, ambitious person, it went from just being around friends to being... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Being the biggest, baddest gang member that you can be, right? And so it was about accolades. It was about work, it was about all type of stupidity. And then it worked, right? Um, so growing up in this identity crisis where I didn't know if I was Khmer enough to be Khmer, 
because I was light skinned. I wasn't American enough. I wasn't white enough to be American. I wasn't Asian enough and looked down on by other Asians. Uh, I found my identity in the streets and in this game. Okay, um, okay, homie. So I'm guessing that you're uh, you grew up in East Side Long Beach. Okay, besides uh, yep. Tiny Rascals, is that correct or incorrect? Mm -hmm. Okay, besides Tiny uh, Rascals, besides beefing with Tiny Rascals, can you elaborate on other gangs around that your around that area, and also what other gangs were uh, were Asian boys beefing with around that area? So. It's great that you're asking these questions on what gangs and, you know, not very enough. But I do want to emphasize that none of that matters, right? Uh, none, of, none of these gangs technically matter in the grand scope of things. But there was, uh, you know, there was CBC, um, Cambodian Brother Clan. There was OSB, Oriental Soldiers. There were YCT, Young Crazy Thugs. And then there was, like, like three or four Mexican gangs that was like the biggest fuck work. And those were kind of like main targets, main focus, because in the in the close uh, class of, you know, Asian gang rivalry, and just gang rivalry, there was the, the race drama there, right? The racism there, Khmer versus Mexicans. And that was East Side Longo, West Side Longo, North Side Longo, Crazy Latino Boys, and Barrio Lopez. I don't know how you say it, but that was like the, greater thing that we worried about there was race relations. Okay, what are you incarcerated for and how long is your sentence? I'm um, incarcerated for murder, first degree murder, 50 years of life, and I've done 16 years now. How old are you, were you, were you when you were incarcerated? I was 18 years old when I committed my murder and I think I was I went on a run and got caught at like 19. Okay, um, without any self-incrimination and incriminating others, um, would you able to elaborate on how you caught your case and how they eventually caught uh, you? So I committed my case, like full responsibility. It was my decision. It was not, it was not anything I caught. It was not anything I did by mistake. Um, this is the worst, this is a bad decision, right? So, um, I was chilling at my homie's house, and some of the younger homies came, and they were yelling and screaming, and you could obviously tell that they got into a fight, and they laughed, like they're black and blue, they're bleeding, and I just so happened to have uh, a gun on me at the time. And so, all I heard was key words. I heard Mexican, I heard beat up, and then I heard, like, down the block, right? And so, I kind of snapped, ran down the block, got down my hand, uh, turned the corner and opened fire at a group. Um, yeah, and shot him, chased him down, um, kind of left him there to bleed, right? Uh, very traumatizing. Uh, and I, I assume for him and his family, but also for me, um, very vivid still. Uh, without giving so many details, like I can literally, as I'm telling you this, I can see it. Um, and it was, it was not nice, you know? It was something that, that, that I don't know, it's like it came from somewhere that I didn't think I was capable of, even though I was like this gang member already that done a lot of things, you know, just seeing that, seeing like, Feeling that, like feeling the gunpowder on you, seeing the flashes, all of that is still very traumatizing today. Um, because not because it happened to me, like because I was a perpetrator, but because of the the scope of the, the effect of the, those actions, right? Um, like I can only imagine what I did to his mother, to his family, because as I'm incarcerated, my mother and my family are going through some things, and I can like times that by five to see what they're going through because they don't even have this stuff anymore. So, yeah. Okay, at this point in your life, um, do you believe, huh? at this point in your life, do you believe that you got a fair trial and a fair sentence? Still try for what? Do you believe you got a fair trial and a fair sentence at this point in your life? Um, 
Yeah, I, I actually... You have 60 seconds remaining. I actually feel like I didn't get the, the full, you know, um, punishment for what I did, right? Because even though the court are aware of, like, the transcripts or what they assume happened, I know what happened, right? And like I said earlier, it wasn't a mistake. Like, I did just accidentally, like, it was intentional, and I did it. And knowing that I did it, going through trial, being a young kid and being afraid and not saying anything, not even getting on stand, like, I feel like 50 years of life is a long time. Um, but there's still an opportunity to go home. And when you consider, like, when you compare that to Lionel's life where he's dead, you know, he's gone. Uh, I don't I don't think that's fair. And it's not my decision whether to say it's fair or not, like, what I got. When you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? So even though that trial process was very, like, traumatizing and I felt alone and I was going through so many triggers, afterwards, because of my conditioning, I was like, fuck it. All right, so I'm not going home because life was back then in, you know, 2006 and 2009. Never went home. So I was like, well, this is what I know. This is what I'm in here for. And I've heard all the stigmas and stories and stereotypes about prison. And I had to go out with, like, I'm going to fuck everything up. I'm going to be the person who's doing the violence. I'm not going to be a victim. I'm not going to do whatever, right? All of these this ideology about gang life and instead of being committed to Asian wars, I was committed to like the homies, right? Quote unquote the homies, any Asian, any Islander, any you know, Indian. I was gonna, you know, I was gonna be for that greater gang, I guess. And so I hit the yard and I went on every mission and I created an identity and like it was very, like nothing changed. Even after so much that happened, right? Somebody died, I went through county jail, that was big in my life too, and I went through this trial, and it was like, I can't believe I'm going through this. After that happened, it almost like washed away, and it was like, all right, back to what I know, right? So it was very stupid. Um, so I'm guessing you were at level four, 180, right? So, uh, can you um, elaborate or tell us what level 4180 penitentiaries or prison that you've been through? So uh, my first prison, well, we hit Lancaster Reception, um, and then we went to um, High Desert State Prison, uh, CER, that's a 180 prison. I landed there on a lockdown. And then, like, as soon as we got off the lockdown, the Mexicans, the uh, South Siders, the Northerners, the whites, they all went up. And so, for the majority of my time there, I spent uh, five years there, uh, in, and off, in and out of lockdowns. And when we were, on lock, we were not on lockdowns, I was in, you know, missions and stuff. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Doing a lot of stuff that really didn't matter to me back then, right? It didn't really matter to me that I got a write up because it doesn't matter how many points I got, which determines, you know, whether or not you get more freedom, uh, because I was never going home, so why not? And in that environment, no, at the time, there was no programs, there was no self-help, there was GED and NA, AA, that was it. So, yeah, but that, that life in high desert state prison was very miserable, dark, and it kind of resembles like a dog pound, right? There was bullet holes on the wall, and the cops was killing people every time the riot happened. And then, in and out of the hole, they finally sent me to a worse prison, which was Pelican Bay State Prison. I stayed up there for seven years. And the first two years, I was still fucking up, but then there was a transition, right? 2014, 2015. Uh, the laws passed to SB 260, 261, and so kind of really fed up with like the nothingness of prison life and gang life. 
uh, started kind of searching out for more. Um, so after seven years there, I came here three months ago. So this is my first level three, my first like stay away from my level four. Okay. Um. Why did they send you to Pelican Bay State Prison? Because you got so many write-ups. Did you do a mission and they sent you in a, in a terminal shoe? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so uh, I went from High Desert to Pelican Bay because they were turning sea yard into something called like an honor yard or a PPF yard. So at the time, I, you know, I went on another mission and I called, called harm to another person and they was like, you know what, that's your last straw. Well, go further away from home and they sent me up there. So it was kind of like as a punishment, but I did a, like a, a, a de facto shoe time in the hole. So when I got kicked out, that was my shoe and I got kicked out to the main line out there. Okay, I mean, uh, what do you have to say to the youngsters out here that's involved in gang activity or thinking about joining gangs? I will tell them to question everything, right? Uh, question the loyalty, question um, the work, quote unquote, question uh, how reliable those guys are, question the reasons, like question all of that shit, right? Because as a homie, so this one story I always tell is, when I was 14, I used to walk home, I had a big ass east side tattoo on my arm, and like, I used to get banged on all the time. Like all the time. Mexican, other gang members, other Asian gangs. And um, like the homies knew this. Cause I used to come be like, yo, I just got down, let's, let's go, let's go lady these up. And they would know, right? So the big homies, quote unquote, they used to come by, they used to pass by the streets on Anaheim, on PCH, and instead of picking me up, they would just wave, like, what's up? Go up the hood and just keep pushing. And I'm like, damn, like, I'm walking from fucking, you know, Pacific all the way to Freeman, or Pacific to fucking Orange, and, like, you know it's, it's grimy out here and you won't even pick me up. So what I did when I turned 18 and I got a little hoopy, any homie I seen, young, old, walking, I picked them up. And that was my thing, like, you know what, I'm gonna be better than these niggas because you know, these motherfuckers ain't gonna do it for us. And I care about the homies, right? And I used to fucking get calls in the middle of the night. Hey, hey, can you take me here? Can you pick me up here? Can you drop me off here? And I'm like, yup, as long as y'all got gas money, right? I just, this is what homies do. Like, it didn't matter if you were from Suez, you were from Exotic, you were from SOS, or you were from Edge Force. I got you. I'm picking you up, I'm dropping you off. Um, I did a lot of like, well, I was a little shit like that for the homies, right? And then I went to prison and it was all gone. Like, it's humiliating how much time I spent with the homies and how much time they spent on me when I went to prison. Literally, because of my loyalty to the homies. And how I had to, as a grown man, crawl back to my family and ask for support. Which they did willingly, but it's like, damn, all that time out there, I should have spent more with the homies, like, with, the, with my family, right? So, I'm not saying there's some solid, not some solid ones out there. Like, I still got solid homies today. One of them died, uh, I won't even say his name or his gang, but he died off a uh, police shooting. Another one died off of another police shooting, and then another one is in prison with me, right? They're all, uh, like, doing time or death. So I got three solid homies that I can count on. Two are dead, one are in prison. None of them can help me. The rest are all out there, dang in the hood, not worried about nothing, right? So my question, and the, the thing that kind of led me away from the gangs is, how much do you love me if when I'm not around, you forget about me, right? So I want you to question that. Like, this is, this is what I want to tell the young homies. Like, find your day ones, find your solid ones, Stick with them. You don't got to be a gang for that. Even if it's you want to go rob a bunch of people, you want to sell or you want to be the hardest gang member, you don't need to be in the hood to do none of that. Or if you want to go to college, if you want to play sports, if you want to make music, do YouTube videos, 
You don't need to be a part of the hood to, to do all of that. You can still be a young fly nigga doing all of this shit without being the hood and the obligations of the hood, right? I'm picking up these beats because the big homie used to fucking date fucking some girl who no longer cares about him, and so the homie shoots this other gang. Like this is what we're fighting for. Like I don't, I don't understand that. Not only that, as I'm willing to kill somebody, come to prison, and forgive you for not even looking out for me. Like, are, are, are we really like considering these things? Because I know one thing, especially for you know my kids, we come from trauma. So when we commit to something, our loyalty factor to that, we know how to kind of like go brutally about it, right? And so we need to kind of question what we're willing to do and how far we're willing to push this for who and it, are those reasons valid, right? I think it's very hard to do. A lot of big words to fucking figure out, but shit is real and we're playing life and death out here. Not, is this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. This is not a game of Killer 13, you know, or, or Poison. This is, this is real life. And we're, we're playing with big guns and we're playing with big money and we're playing with real life. So you have to consider that. All right, homie. I don't have anything else to, uh, I don't have any other questions for you, but do you have anything else to address or add? I think the only thing I have to add is uh, after all my years in prison, 16 years, after all the time in and out of jail, after all the gangbanging, I think the bravest thing I've ever done is sit in a room full of other races, Mexicans, blacks, whites, and have the courage to cry in front of them, right? Have the courage to kind of like dig within myself and be like, damn, so like I'm fucked up. I need help, right? I need a, I need help with this shit, right? If I was willing to fucking run down the street and kill somebody and really thought I was brave, like that was compared to nothing. Like when I when I sat there and, and, and was like, yo, like I don't know how to do this shit, you know? Like I might not ever get out. My son is turning 15 next month. And I don't know if I'll ever see, get to hug them again, right? That shit is scary. And having to face that, and having the courage to ask for that type of help, that's, that's real shit right like there. And then trusting them, these people that I just met, to kind of like help me with that, right? That's another level of friendship. You, you can even call it a gang if you want to. But at least I know when I call on these fools, they finna be there, right? Like when I'm in prison right now, I call my old silly, and I'm like, bro, like I'm struggling, like I need some money, like he's gonna send that, right? And I met that guy in prison, some random Chinese guy that I never knew before, that lived in San Francisco, and grew up around blacks. Like he, right now I call him, bro, I need some money, you know, send it. Not from the gang, not somebody had to knock down for it. He didn't even have to jump me to test my loyalty to him, right? Because that's what you, that's what happens when you get put on the gang. I'm going to work hard to see if you really want to be with me. And then I'm going to test you every time I need a test. So, you know, uh, talk about what you need to talk about with some people that you can, that you can trust, you know, like that's, that's the, be brave about it, you know? Ask for help. Oh All right, bro. Would you like to give like a shout out to any family and friends, or, or thank the audience and things of that nature before these things cut off? Uh, you know what? I give a shout out to. My you have 60 seconds remaining. My brother Brian Yang, my other brother David Nguyen, uh, Severio Strong, my mama, my daddy, my son, my baby mama. Um, and the homegirl Tammy who's been here and uh, really like family to me, man, and been helping me out with some of these things, you know? It's, uh, it's a lot to change, but I'll do it if the greater community, um, if I can help the greater community.